Thanks for joining me here on Tropical Weather Impact. It's Tuesday, July 22nd. We're in the midst of a heat wave here across a big chunk of the deep south, including New Orleans. The next two days, heat is our primary headline, but we are going to be watching this tropical disturbance moving through the northern Gulf, bring us some rain and eventually some relief from this big time heat wave. So here's what we're covering in the New Orleans, Louisiana and Mississippi areas. Our heat advisories in effect today. We're talking heat index numbers over 110 at times. I do think Wednesday also brings a pretty big risk for heat. Extreme heat watch in effect that could be upgraded to an extreme heat warning. That's as heat index numbers get closer and closer to 100. 13 or maybe even higher. And so a bit more than our typical summertime heat here. This is that dangerous stuff that even if you're used to working out in it, you've got to be extra, extra careful. Doesn't matter whether you're from here or not. You still got to listen to your body and make sure you're hydrating and taking those breaks. But here's what's going to bring us some relief starting Wednesday afternoon into Wednesday evening. Scattered showers and storms will begin to develop and move across Louisiana. Now we are already tracking this disturbance. It's somewhat uh, two different features right now. You've got this feature of all the tropical moisture showers and storms sitting off the east coast, and then you've got this upper level low spinning closer to the Bahamas. Now these two features are both heading to the west. The upper level low is going to slide further south this direction, whereas all that tropical moisture is going to fly along the northern Gulf here, push all the way towards Texas and actually bring to better chances of rain for Texas by the end of this week, too. And so uh, the thing we're thinking right now is organization with this doesn't seem very likely. I do think it looks similar to what we saw last week where organization didn't happen and we just had a broad low pressure. The only difference with this round is we've got this upper level low tangled up in it too, and that's not necessarily going to help this thing wrap up into anything uh, at all. So at the end of the day, I do think the messaging with this is just some extra rain and there will even be breaks in the rain. So we don't want to build this up into something major. It is not, but it will bring us some rain here along the northern Gulf Coast. Again, for your Tuesday, Florida is going to be the hot spot. We're already seeing a big burst of showers and storms in northern parts of the peninsula there this morning. So as we go throughout the week, our high pressure that's currently sitting over the northern Gulf that dominates us today and keeps us mostly dry. It's going to start to back away to the west. Here comes this large area of disturbed weather. You do probably see some broad low pressure forming in this tomorrow as it gets out over the warm Gulf waters. Notice you just have scattered showers inland though, and so New Orleans, Mississippi and really along the entire Gulf Coast from Louisiana to Florida, you will have passing showers Wednesday afternoon. Hopefully it brings you a little relief from the intense heat. Fast forward in motion. You can see there still just a broad unorganized low, but probably a low pressure here nonetheless. And things are still passing through the northern parts of the Gulf here with the heaviest of the rain down in the central Gulf and closer to that broad low pressure. So this is a sign that uh, you've got the upper level low and you've got some wind shear keeping this thing rather messy and unorganized. So that's why development chances just don't look all that impressive right now. Fast forward into Thursday into Friday. You've got that broad low pressure still spinning across the Gulf and pushing towards Texas. So this would bring a better shot of rain towards Texas by the end of the week. I think Friday and Saturday for areas around Houston. That's when you'll start to see a better shot of those tropical showers here in Louisiana. Again, not every day is a complete washout, but I think there will be passing showers each and every day. And luckily that'll hold temperatures down. Also, there will be more clouds too. So the way it stands right now, the flood risk, it's not off the charts here. I don't want you stressing too much here. I mean, we're talking about what we usually do in the regular summer months. We dodge showers and thunderstorms. We'll do that on Wednesday. We'll do that on Thursday. Now, when you look at the flood risk overall, it's isolated at best. I mean, you're talking level one out of four tomorrow, level one out of four on Thursday. This is a very, very limited risk for street flooding and what we do all summer long. Now, the good thing about this disturbance is it is moving through the Gulf at a steady rate, we'll call it. And so I think any showers trying to pass through the region, they're doing this just that they're passing through. Now, occasionally you will see some heavy downpours that are two to four inches an hour. Those are the ones you have to watch, but I think the flood risk overall is going to be rather limited later on this week. With all that being said, it's a disturbance in the Gulf. The waters are hot. We watch it. We'll keep you updated if anything changes. And I do think it's plausible the Hurricane Center throws a little yellow tag somewhere up here. I mean, you will probably see some low pressure organizing. It's just the chances of it organizing are on the low side right now. So all that tropical moisture, regardless of development, there it is. 
big chunk of it's going to break off to the west. It's riding under that ridge of high pressure. It pushes along the northern Gulf. This is why any showers that do form, they will easily be on the heavy side, especially into Thursday. You can see that concentrated area of moisture right here in the central and northern Gulf, and then that eventually pushes towards Texas. Again, I think Texas has a better shot of tropical showers Wednesday and or excuse me, Friday and into Saturday. So that's when that chance of rain will begin to increase across parts of uh, Texas. The organization of this, it just doesn't look overly impressive. We can look at a lot of different guidance here. The GFS and European models are our two global models, and they are showing a very unorganized kind of blotchy mess here. And so wherever you see all these little red circles and yellow or uh, green circles, that's the model showing that this thing remains broad and isn't able to consolidate and come together probably. And so this means it would just be an unorganized low. And you can see by Friday morning, we may have an unorganized low somewhere south of Louisiana continuing to push off towards Texas. Yeah, that still brings some rain, but you're not talking about a name storm. You're certainly not talking about a hurricane with this instance or this setup. So why is it not organizing? Well, a couple reasons. Uh, it's a fairly large area of disturbed weather. It takes time for things to come together. Two, there is some wind shear. You can see this upper level low spinning here. That keeps a fresh amount of wind shear pushing on this thing as we head into the Thursday and Friday. And I just don't think the ingredients are really there for this thing to blow up in anything major. Now, we have seen time and time again where these types of setups, you do see maybe a weak low pressure consolidated enough in a, one of the one of the areas where the showers and storms are concentrated and you may get a depression form before it moves inland to Texas. That has happened many, many times. So that wouldn't necessarily be shocking. I just don't think we have signals for anything major developing out of this. As we always say, it's hurricane season though. You want to check in at least once a day to see how things are evolving, but concern level again is about as low as it can get with this one, just like it was. Uh, for last week. Again, the water temperatures, they're plenty warm. Whenever you look at them in the Gulf here, everyone always wants to see these. Uh, I got news for you. Water temperatures are never a problem in the Gulf as we get into the heart of hurricane season. Now, sometimes you have some really hot, hot water temperatures, but this is never going to be a limiting factor for a tropical system in the Gulf here all the way through October. I mean, we've had major hurricanes in late October here and water temperatures were in the mid 80s. So just to reflect that yeah, water temperatures are warm enough, but you got to have other ingredients here and they are quite warm. Maybe you've got plans to go to the beach. Uh, we're sitting in the upper 80s to even near 90 off the coast of Louisiana, the coast of Florida, sitting in the upper 80s as well. Notice down by Key West sitting down at about 89 degrees. Elsewhere in the tropics, things don't look terribly active right now. I think we're probably going to see a lull and at least anything significant trying to develop for the next couple of weeks. There are some signs that the atmosphere will start to become more conducive for tropical development in early August. News flash, that's not shocking either as we get into the peak of the season, but I think we're going to have and um, we're going to be OK. Nothing significant trying to develop at least any time soon. Right now, what we're watching uh, was Invest 94. That feature doesn't look like it's going to do anything either. It's battling wind shear and dry air already, and what they were calling Invest 94, they're not even calling that anymore as it lifts towards the island. So it's, you can see there south of Puerto Rico, down the Lesser Antilles Islands, getting ready for some scattered showers as this tropical wave pushes on through. But it's pushing through at a steady rate. Wind shear is too high, dry air is too predominant. And uh, that's why it's just not going to develop into much of anything. And in fact, when you look at the dust here with this thing, the feature is sitting about here. That is not its friend, and so that's one of the reasons it's probably not going to do much. In fact, a lot of the islands are probably going to see a lot of dusty skies here over the next couple of days as this long fetch of Saharan dust. I mean, this thing extends all the way from the Caribbean nearly back to the continent of Africa. So we've had some fairly healthy burst of Saharan dust creating a stable atmosphere, a dry atmosphere out here where nothing can really develop much into anything. So where we stand right now, we've had three named storms, Andrea, Barry, and Chantal. Uh, we have not had Dexter. We've had a couple invest in a couple areas that we thought might do it, but they did not. So Dexter and Aaron are still our next two names on the list. And we are still calling for about an average, if not a just slightly above average season, which would take us through uh, the first two columns of this list. So just a reminder, we still have a lot of hurricane season to go. When you look at it on the climatology or the history of hurricane season, we are now sitting a little bit further than my dot here, sitting further into July. July is not known as a traditionally active month. Now, in some of our crazy seasons like 2020 
and 2005. Some of these landmark seasons, yes, July was extremely active, but it is completely normal for us to not have much activity in the tropics in the month of July. And there's actually usually a decent little lull that happens in towards the middle and end of July. It happens often. And so we get into this little lull and everyone thinks the season's doing just fine. And then all of a sudden we get into August and things ramp up. September still our peak month. So that's where we stand as of your Tuesday, July 22nd. We're getting ready for some intense heat here on the northern Gulf. But luckily we've got some of those tropical showers going to be greeting us later this week. Help out with the heat and we'll be keeping you updated all along the way as we go throughout the entire week here. I want to thank you so much for joining me here on Tropical Weather Impact. I'll see you right back here tomorrow morning. Same place, same time.